Welcome to Universal Studio Singapore. Located at Resorts World Sentosa, roughly 40 minutes outside of the CBD, this park opened in 2011 and is easily one of the most interesting parks in the Universal Studios lineup. That's because unlike every other Universal Studios, this one isn't owned by Universal and is instead owned by Genting Singapore under a licensing agreement, so it's considered one of the many attractions of Resorts World Sentosa. One of the biggest differences that many will notice is that the entrance to the park is essentially in the middle of a shopping mall. But it's what is behind the entrance that we're going to be discussing today. Universal Studios Singapore is an interesting collection of some of Universal's best attractions alongside some unique additions not found anywhere else. So join us as we jump into the park and take a tour around to discover what Universal Studios Singapore is all about. Just like almost every Universal Studios theme park around the world, after scanning your ticket and walking through the gates, you'll enter into the familiar land of Hollywood. With a focus on shops and services, Hollywood officially only has one attraction called the Pantages Hollywood Theatre, which is an entertainment venue currently showcasing Trolls Hug Time Jubilee. Now, admittedly, we did skip this show whilst we were here, so we can't tell you much about what's inside, but shows alternate quite regularly, so it's worth checking out what's showing at the time of your visit. Just across the way from Pantages Hollywood Theatre, you enter into New York, which is themed to, well, New York. The first attraction you'll notice in this land, because you can't miss its giant facade, is Sesame Street Spaghetti Space Chase, a slow-moving suspended dark ride for the little ones and little at heart where you'll follow Elmo and the gang to help stop Macaroni the Merciless and his minions from stealing all the spaghetti from Earth. It's a cute little adventure with some musical elements that we highly recommend for families. Now across the street is New York's second major attraction, Lights Camera Action by Steven Spielberg, though some might struggle to see it at first glance as it's a little more obscured than a giant Elmo. This special effects showcase is more of a show than a ride, but it's perfect for anybody looking to get a taste of classic Universal Studios. The effects can get pretty intense with fire, sparks, splashing, and more that we won't spoil, so we do recommend checking it with your little ones before entering, but this is one of those attractions that we recommend you don't miss. Elsewhere in New York, you are likely to find seasonal attractions and entertainment, so once again, double check before visiting to see if there is anything in particular you're interested in. Around the corner from New York is the intriguing sci-fi city. This land is exclusive to Universal Studios Singapore and acts as a kind of Tomorrowland, featuring all things sci-fi with a focus on thrills. Likely the first attraction you'll encounter here is Transformers The Ride The Ultimate 3D Battle, a screen-based thrilling indoor dark ride that is not a roller coaster. This attraction has become a bit of a staple for Universal Studios, with several other parks having the same attraction, so if you've ridden it before, you can likely skip this one as it gets insane waits of over two hours. But if it's your first time to a Universal Studios park, or you haven't been in a while, then this is another of those classic don't miss attractions with stunning effects, thrilling elements, and a fun, easy to follow storyline. Just down from Transformers is one of our first flat rides or filler attractions called Accelerator. This is essentially a more intense version of a teacup ride that is all about spinning and getting insanely dizzy. Personally, these aren't for me, but I know kids and teens love to push themselves to their limits on these, uh, to which I say, go nuts! And finally, the highlight of Sci-Fi City and possibly all of Universal Studios Singapore, the impossible to miss Battlestar Galactica steel dueling coasters known as Human and Cylon. Manufactured by Vekoma and opening with a rather rocky history of extended closures, these are two of the best roller coasters that you can experience in Southeast Asia. The unique selling point here is that, despite dueling, each track provides a unique coaster experience, with Human using a more family-orientated sit-down train with limited inversions, and Cylon using a suspended train with a more aggressive looping layout. Each uses a launch system to propel guests through the track, but dueling seems to be more of a coincidence rather than a feature these days, which is a little disappointing. If you can tolerate thrilling coasters, I highly recommend giving both of these a try as they are brilliant. 
If you're a bit apprehensive, then perhaps start with human, see how you feel, and then work your way up to Cylon because it's easily the more thrilling experience. But if you're struggling to remember which is which when you get there, just remember human is more human. Right next door to Sci-Fi City is the land of ancient Egypt. Despite its impressive size and dominating facades, this area only contains two attractions that are centered around the Mummy franchise, such as our next attraction, Revenge of the Mummy. This is the third iteration and arguably the best version of this iconic high-speed indoor roller coaster, and it includes some impressive dark ride sections, plus a launch that propels you into twists and turns in near-complete darkness. For those who have been to Universal Studios Orlando, this is a near replica of the mummy coaster found there with some slight modifications of the story. The other attraction in ancient Egypt is Treasure Hunters, a slow moving vintage car style attraction that takes you on a tour around the land. It has some fun effects, includes a lovely view of the lake and is perfect for younger guests, but we did see this one get some astronomical weights for what it is, almost over two hours. Part of this might be the fact that there isn't a ton of family attractions at the moment whilst half the park is under construction to make way for minions, but if you're keen to experience this then get there early and don't bother if it's over a 20 minute wait. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and want to support us, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to take it even further, consider becoming a Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash review time. Continuing around the park, we find ourselves in the Lost World, which is unsurprisingly majority dedicated to Jurassic Park. The Lost World is one of the biggest lands over at Universal Studios Singapore, and it allows for a bit more exploration with its asymmetrical layout. Past the famous Jurassic Park gates, which were covered by a haunt sign when we visited, are three attractions, the first of which is Jurassic Park Rapids Adventure. Unlike other Universal Studios parks, which have Jurassic Park as a boat ride, this is a full-on river rapids that contains all the elements that you've come to expect, such as dinosaur animatronics, plenty of moments to get drenched, and an impressive finale drop. It's definitely worth experiencing this unique take on a classic Universal ride. Still within Jurassic Park, around the corner, you'll find Dinosaurin, a little flat ride where you can control the height of your dinosaur as it spins around just under our next attraction called Canopy Flyer. This aerial suspended roller coaster has you soaring over Jurassic Park, giving you some great views of the land and Universal Studio Singapore as a whole. It's a great family coaster with a decent punch that's worth a ride if the wait isn't ridiculously long. Finally, we come to the last attraction in the Lost World, and it's none other than the iconic Waterworld stunt show. We rave about this production over on our official review of Universal Studios Singapore, so if you want something more comprehensive, we highly recommend checking that out. But for those who want the brief, this is one of the best stunt shows in the world, with insane effects on an absurd scale that is sure to knock your socks off. So please do not miss this attraction. Depending on the time of year that you visit, this attraction can only have one showtime, so don't miss out because when it's full, it's full. Lucky last at Universal Studios Singapore, we come to the land of Far Far Away. And don't worry because you'll see this place coming from Far Far Away with the grand facade of our first attraction in the land, Shrek 4D. Yep, you heard that right, this massive facade simply contains Shrek 4D a theater style attraction that is pretty self-explanatory. Unfortunately, this was closed for refurbishment during our visit. Surprisingly, inside the gift shop of Shrek 4D is Magic Potion Spin, a tiny little Ferris wheel for children. This has to be one of the strangest placements of an attraction we've ever seen, but it's also pretty cool to see. Up next, we have Donkey Live, an interactive comedy show with the one and only Donkey. It works very similar to Turtle Talk with Crush at the Disney theme parks, where guests interact with a donkey via a screen that is played by a live performer. Kids seem to have a lot of fun with this one, and while some of the jokes just didn't land for adults, it's still good fun, so worthwhile checking out. At the end of the street, you'll come across another suspended roller coaster, this time called Puss in Boots Giant Journey. Whilst not being the most thrilling roller coaster on property, it's certainly the most interesting with a spinning vertical lift hill, multiple show scenes, and a strange cat drunk dancing scene. I think it involved catnip that left us going, huh? 
This one is perfect for the family, so definitely add it to your list if you're interested. Lucky last ride for Far Far Away and Universal Studios Singapore is Enchanted Airways. This is your fairly standard junior roller coaster with some theming that gives a good view of the park at a mild pace. This is perfect for children who want their first experience on a coaster with no intimidating elements to work them up towards other rides in the future. And that concludes our attraction tour of Universal Studios Singapore. In a few years, we're going to see some big changes at this park, considering that almost one quarter of the park is under construction for Despicable Me and Minion Land, and Super Nintendo World has been confirmed for Universal Studios Singapore in the future, but we are yet to get a solid time frame for that project. If you're keen on experiencing Universal Studios Singapore, I highly recommend checking it out if you're around Southeast Asia, especially if you have never done a Universal Studios park before. Also, this is our first time trying this style of tour, so if you enjoy it, be sure to give us some feedback. For review time, I'm Dom. Thanks for watching.